Hey, I'm Doug Lane with SQL Theater, and today we're going to talk about the trouble with NoLock. NoLock is a query hint that developers often use in order to make sure that their queries come back quicker because they're not blocked by other processes. In particular, NoLock does a couple of things when we add it as a hint to our queries. First, what happens at a storage level is that the query with no lock will say, I'm not going to take out any locks on the data that I'm reading. I'm not going to prevent anything else from coming in and modifying that data. When that happens, we can be running, say, a massive select statement. And as we're reading through, another query can come in that, say, wants to update some of those rows. And we're just going to keep on reading whether or not these rows are being changed by that update statement or not. The second thing that it does is that other queries that may have taken out an exclusive lock, something to freeze that data from other queries coming in, the no lock query will just blow right past that lock and read that data anyway. So you may be reading from data that was already being updated. In either case, you get something that's called a dirty read where you're reading through data and maybe it's committed, maybe it's not, but that's what it looks like at the moment where we read through it. The query just comes barging in asking for whatever data you've got right now. It's a lot like when General Chang is cross-examining Captain Kirk in Star Trek VI and he says, don't wait for the translation, answer me now. It maybe doesn't chew up quite as much scenery as Christopher Plummer, but anyway. Let's take a look at a real life example of no lock and the risks that come with using it. Let's say we've got a content management system and in it we store all kinds of text from publications. And the publications range from church bake sales to movie screenplays. There's just all kinds of stuff in there. Jim, our DBA, is noticing things look a little funny with the content that's coming out. And he discovers that some of the publication IDs have been crossed up. The text doesn't actually match with the publication anymore, and those IDs need to be reconciled and cleaned up. So Jim goes about preparing a statement that's going to fix all of that. At the same time, Edna Hillman of the First Presbyterian Church is getting ready for their annual bake sale. And she goes out to our content management site and wants to print out the bake sale flyer. Because we've used no lock, Edna's query is going to grab whatever is in the database when she runs that statement. At the same time, Jim is updating that data. Let's see what kind of bake sale flyer Edna ends up printing out. How does this sound, Lucille? Annual First Presbyterian Bake Sale with homemade pumpkin pie, apple fritters, cookies, sweets, and more. Saturday, July 24th, and Sunday, July 25th. All proceeds go to our community outreach programs. And you will know my name is the Lord! when I lay my vengeance upon thee. That is going to be an epic bake sale. All right, so we've seen that if you really need your data to be accurate, you can't really count on no lock to give you the right results. There are some other scenarios where no lock can be a little bit dangerous. Say for example, you run an auction site and there's a query that uses no lock that tells you what the high bid is. If you're running out of time and you've got two different people bidding, if they're using no lock to figure out what the highest bid is right now, they'll both end up bidding on the same price and you'll get a collision where they'll say, hey, I should have won that, that's what I bid. There are a few times where using no lock really can pay off and you don't need to know the exact number, you just need something that's pretty close. For example, let's say we wanted to get the count of rows on a table. Well, as long as we're not trying to reconcile the number of rows and come up with an exact number, just getting an estimate, like say there are 5 million rows or 500 million rows, even if some rows are being added or deleted, that's probably good enough. 
Another time where precision really doesn't matter at the exact moment are on election night, where returns are coming in and you just want uh, some number in time. It doesn't matter if there's more data coming in, but you just want to get snapshots here and there of what the vote tally looks like. Eventually, when all the voting is accounted for, that exact number you really want to make sure isn't reading any data in flight. But if you're just keeping tabs on who's winning, then it really doesn't matter if you get that number exactly right. Before we go, there is one question I want you to get in the habit of asking yourself whenever you encounter a query that uses no lock. And here's the question. Is the data wrong or is it just old? Think about that for a minute. When you're using no lock and you're getting data that may have been half modified but not completely modified, when those results come back half baked, are they wrong? or are they just not as up to date as they could have been had you waited to run that query? There's no real right answer for this. It just depends on your own situation. But just know that this is a question you should be thinking about whenever you're using NoLock. Thanks for joining us here on SQL Theater. We'll see you next time.